Hello, everyone. I, 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 yes, I am Daniel. So I, uh, I do curl full time. I started curl soon, 25 years ago, actually. I work and curl full time all day. And I do that uh, for the company Wolf SSL. We sell curl support to companies. So today I wanted to tell you a little bit about, uh, well, curl and the journey with Rust inside of it. But curl is C, there's a stable API, an API. There are lots of backends and we have inserted Rust into this. And that's sort of why I'm here today, right? And there are some challenges with this, uh, but we're at some sort of point right now that I'm going to tell you about, um, maybe something about uh, the future, where to go next, uh, will it be more Rust or, or won't it? And um, there's going to be a Q&A session after this. So hang around and ask me anything. Um, you know, I'm here remotely, so I, uh, getting questions in the middle is really tricky. So let's uh, avoid that. But um, I'll be around and ask, uh, answer any questions afterwards, as many as you can possibly have. So let's start out with the fact that um, curl is C, right? Uh, this picture is from around the time when we uh, created uh, curl. Uh, it was back in 1998 then. And back when we started curl, there really was no choice about which language to use if you wanted to do something like curl and libcurl. Libraries, a, a library that uh, would be available and provided on virtually all platforms everywhere. And C has been the factor that has kept curl portable and available virtually everywhere. And it is going to be, uh, in well, in my particular, my personal plans, there's going to be, remain an option uh, even going forward to provide that sort of ability, the portability to remain everywhere. But sure, I also read this book, you know, how to do things uh, in a different way. So um, things have, um, developed a little bit. But I, I just want to emphasize that the C in curl is not for the language, it's actually for the client. That's how I actually came up with the word, you know, silly word. Anyway, so um, curl and libcurl is relying and really is one of the biggest sales pitches or, or sort of one of the biggest reasons for curl, for its existence, for its popularity, why it's everywhere, is that we have a rock solid ABI and API. We don't shake that, we don't break that. So we want to be that you know solid bridge of stone that's going to be there for a long time for whoever wants to 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 use it and, and build stuff with it so we do things forward compatible but it means that whatever you build today with libcurl is going to remain functional even tomorrow in two years in 10 years in most cases actually for 20 years by now so we don't break the abi ever, we haven't broken it since 2006 at least, so that, that's not ever, that's just 16 years or 17, but anyway. Uh, so curl is everywhere, libcurl in particular the lang uh, library, so we still sort of need to make sure that this front, this thing we provide for applications, we don't break that. And thanks to this, we now have curl or libcurl actually most, in most cases in, in more than 10 billion installations worldwide. And it's really everywhere uh, in all your devices. So we're in servers, you know, cars, printers, fridges, light bulbs, game consoles, you know, robots, um, drones, well, whatever, printers, music instruments, all the apps, uh, um, portable mobile, mobile operating systems, uh, you name it, curl is there. So we need, or rather our users expect us to provide that solid front so we don't break uh, that. But apart from that, then we can change everything inside, right? And the downside, of course, with curl having been written in C is that, yeah, there might have been a few vulnerabilities over time. Of course, um, doing it in another language wouldn't have sort of removed all of them, but my assessment says that roughly 50% of them that we have done so far um, and actually keep doing uh, are um, basically due to what I call C mistakes. Of course, that's based on my assessment, what I sort of consider being mistakes due to C. So changing that into another language could have helped and, and removed some of those mistakes or vulnerabilities than making a, a more safer, secure world. Uh, and I mean, we're going into a world with even more uh, internet connected devices, right? Everything is getting uh, power and network connections, internet connectivity. And I 
my prediction says that we're going to have many more curl installations in the future. So getting a better, safer curl is a big benefit for, for a lot of users, basically for the society. So curl is uh, created with a lot of backends and, and you build curl with a lot of third parties when you create that binary blog that runs in, in your um, tools and devices. And backends in curl then is a, basically a selectable alternative implementation. I don't know why we call it backend, more of a puzzle piece. So you, when you build curl, you select which kind of combinations of stuff do you want to do, get into your curl. And most people are familiar with the curl command line tool, right? So then you get it in your Linux distribution or you get it with your Mac or Windows or whatever. And in that case, those who built it for those distributions, they've, they selected that particular backend combination that they want to provide in their builds. But when you build curl yourself, there's a, a well, there are actually a whole plethora of combinations or different things you can select and enable disable when you build curl. So basically we provide backends for, to, to give the builders of curl that power to select what kind of features do you want, uh, depending on what kind of third party libraries do you think are okay, licenses, implementations, features, and, and you know, maturity. And they, those different third party libraries, they can very well be written in different languages, right? as long as we can build with them or link with them in, and get them in the uh, final runtime. It doesn't matter if, if they are. And of course, we have a lot of internal APIs uh, to handle this. And I'll show you more about that, but it doesn't really matter for the outside. As long as this, they are internal, we can modify them and play with them as much as we want. So basically we have a lot of internal different backends then, so that allows us to pick and choose whatever we wanna do. For example, we have um, content encoding for, for HTTP stuff. We have res different resolver solutions. We have IDN, which is international domain names for, for, you know, in the URLs. For example, we have SSH backends, we have TLS backends, we have HTTP3 and we have HTTP backends. And in all of those, we have, well, not in all of those. In some of those, we have Rust solutions and those are the things I'm going to talk about to you. Uh, a little bit more right now. So <clears throat> we actually, um, well, a year or two ago, we started into the fun adventure of creating a new HTTP backend to allow us to um, build curl with a huge chunk of the native C code um, replaced by code written in a separate language, uh, sorry, in a separate library, namely hyper written in Rust. So basically what we did, or I did, uh, we had this, previous setup when, you know, we have an API, we have common logic to do things in curl, you know, connections and resolving things and, and generic transfer engine, how to do things, transfer stuff, potentially many transfers in parallel. And we have this HTTP blob uh, speaking HTTP. And we, of course, you know, we curl supports 26 different protocols. So we have many different protocol implementations, but we have one, we had one for HTTP. So basically, HTTP then uh, involves a lot of things like authentication, setting headers, proxy stuff, you know, content headers, and we have transfer headers that are sort of intermixed in HTTP, and it's not always that clear to users which are which. But anyway, and there's both HTTP 1 and HTTP 2 transmissions. I'm leaving out HTTP 3 for now because of reasons, but uh, never mind. And then, of course, Hyper was introduced into this mix. And in Hyper's case, they, um, that's a library that's uh, written in Rust. That it supports HTTP and HTTP 2, but it doesn't support all HTTP stuff that curl supports. It's curl actually supports more HTTP or stuff built with HTTP or in association with HTTP, not necessarily you know core HTTP stuff like authentication or proxy stuff, which isn't really ex how to use HTTP. So basically, uh, we introduce support to use Hyper for some of the HTTP stuff. So what I did then was, yeah, made I had to re redo uh, curl's implementation so we could do a high level HTTP and we could do the low level, low level HTTP. And one of those low level HTTP implementations is now Hyper. Hyper is written in Rust. And that was just one way. So that was the new thing we did. So a new internal backend to do to select HTTP implementation. But we already since before had another way to do uh, optional TLS implementations. And wow, in in comes Russell's then uh, written in, in in a language you might know. Um, 
So this was yet another TLS back and we started to support in curl. And yeah, Russell's is, um, they support an SC API uh, thanks to this Russell's FFI. Um, and sure, uh, curl already supported a large variety of different TLS libraries. So this was just another um, piece in that setup, which made it easier for us to introduce a new TLS library because we already had this system set up. So um, it was basic only a, a matter of adjusting, uh, writing glue code to make sure that we could use Russell's then instead of the other alternatives like, you know, OpenSSL or GNU TLS or, or uh, NSS or Secure Transport or whatever uh, other options you, you might select from. Um, so yeah, that was actually pretty straightforward. I didn't do that work myself, but um, Jacob who did, he did an excellent job and, and now you can build curl to do that. And I just want to emphasize that this, both the hyper work and the Russell's work was actually supported or sponsored by ISRG and uh, thanks to their Prosima project, um, which made that possible. Uh, I'll get into some details about how it works or, or doesn't work just yet, right? And then we have this third uh, backend, also uh, a Rust written library called Quiche, Quiche being an HTTP3 and quick backend. So yes, they too provide a C API. You, you see a pattern here. So they all provide C APIs, mostly through their FFI system in, in Rust. And thanks to that, uh, we just glue that uh, library into curl and we can use those uh, Rust things to uh, build and run curl. Um, so yeah, um, so basically then we have all these different backends. Um, and when you talk to curl, well, when an application uses the API, um, that's the yellow box, uh, yellow cloud up here. Um, they of course go through the public API and the public API remains the same. It doesn't really matter what kind of internal backends we build with. So that's the key to success here, right? So that's the solid foundation, the API and ABI that we don't fiddle with. That remains the same. That's the public uh, white API here at the top. And then, you know, we provide stuff like, uh, different content encoding, different resolvers, different IDN solutions, different SSH solutions. We do different HTTP backends now then, one of them being Hyper, the Rust library. We have different HTTP3 solutions, one of them being Quiche, the Rust library. And we have a lot of different TLS solutions. Um, of course, then one of them being the uh, Rust uh, option there. So we have Rust solutions for those three different backends. And you can see there are a few backends without Rust solutions yet. <clears throat> so the process to do this actually, well, there have been a few challenges to do this in, in curl. And I think curl has been one of the earlier projects to do this. And so they, I think there are lessons to learn or, or things to corners to polish rough edges to <clears throat> maybe look into more when going forward. So basically, I, <clears throat> I started the project to, to make sure that curl could use hyper for doing HTTP, right? And HTTP is one of the oldest protocols we support in curl. It's, it's actually the oldest. The protocol I started, I the precursor to curl, the precursor to the precursor to curl actually, I, it was called HTTP get. I started that in 1996 with HTTP. That was 300 lines of code. I wanted to do, do some basic HTTP transfers. So, that's the origin of the HTTP code in curl. It has been around for <laughs> a ridiculous uh, um, a long time, but it also then um, has matured. It has been stable. It has provided, and as I mentioned, it has supported uh, a world of devices and tools and services. So um, it was important when switching to hyper that we can actually um, insert hyper into this mix and without it being noticeable at all to the outside, right? That means a byte per byte um, exactness of you know, how the protocols are sent and seen to the outside world. We, we can't tolerate that we do things differently or, or that we don't cannot provide the same feature set with hyper. So that started an adventure. An adventure, I think for both of our projects, I think, um, well, First of all, we were the first user of the Hyper C API, which uh, of course, it's always good to be the first. <laughs> then you get to experience all the fun, both ups and downs, of course. And I think we, we, we could then help Hyper to develop a better C API. And, and in some instances, actually a better API in general, because I think it affected their uh, Rust API several times as well. But it also 
caused us to reconsider a few things of our internals. So we actually, I think we ended up with a better uh, implementations in several aspects because we had to hyper, uh, was a lot more strict in many ways. And we've actually made curl more strict as a result of that to make sure that we had a, a unified approach to a lot of protocol details. But some of the challenges then to just use, to be the first user of an, of an API, um, it's a challenge, right? The headers only and no uh, documentation for the C side of things. And being uh, me, being a C developer and, and um, uh, really, I, I'm here talking at the Rust conference, but I'm a Rust rookie. I don't know Rust at all, actually. So I'm, I'm not the person to ask about Rust specifics, but, but it also then brings a particular kind of um, challenge because all the documentation is for the Rust API and not for the C API. So how do I actually figure out exactly how it works from a C point of view and not, uh, you know, the translation is not always clear to a mere user such as me. And of course, it took some thinking to do this split, how to support the upper layer of HTTP and the lower layer uh, of HTTP uh, pluggable like this. But I think in general, I'm, and my hope was already from the beginning that it would benefit us to make sure that to do this separation, it could be a better way to abstract the protocol implementation inside of curl. And I think it has. Um, it was, it is a, a challenge to, uh, you know, keep up with different API behaviors and paradigms in the different languages, how you do things in, in Rust generally actually affects the, the C API in a way. So it, it becomes a, a C API that is a little bit maybe unusual to a C programmer. Um, not, I mean, it's not uh, impossible or, or totally weird. It just takes some adjustments and, and getting used to uh, a way of thinking. So how to do things, for example. And when then we found memory leaks because we forgot to do something in the uh, C API, it could be really tricky to figure out exactly what went wrong and why and what were we supposed to do previously to avoid it. But otherwise, that's mostly seamless. I mean, the fact that it is rust underneath is rarely a concern for us because it's not really noticeable. And that's the same thing actually goes for using Rustles too. Again, here that they build their C API C API with FFI, uh, the Russell's FFI thing. But again, uh, uh, sp <laughs> sparsely with documentation. So it's a bit hard sometimes to figure out exactly how it works. But in, in this case, I didn't do uh, much of the Russell's integration. So um, I also avoided a lot of those problems personally. But I saw the excellent results from um, mostly Jacob at, at the ISRG who did most of this work. <clears throat> But also then the hours um, situation, how we did, how we do TLS backends was fairly mature already at the time they started this. So it, um, I mean, before they did this work, we had support for 12 different TLS libraries. So this became the 13th TLS library. So basically we, we had polished this uh, way of adding TLS libraries a little bit before they got it. So they got to uh, sort of, stand a little bit on, on, on top of, of shoulders of others. <clears throat> um, annoyingly, not quite feature complete yet. I'll, I'll mention a little bit more about that in a second. So, and, and then the third uh, Rust library, exactly following the same pattern here. And, and I'll, I'll highlight it for you in yellow here. Yes, no documentations for the C API. So this is the third library then with the C API for the Rust library without uh, documentation for a C program, how to use it, which again, makes it difficult. You know, the corner case is what's exactly supposed to happen in this particular scenario. Uh, yes, but, but using quiche in general is not a problem. Quiche is a, then, as I've mentioned, it's, it's for quick and HTTP three. And uh, if you're, I mean, if you're not into quick or HTTP3 details, this is completely strange and unfamiliar territory, but the TLS situation is really weird there and the TLS library situation. So, so is the situation about using quiche in production. So that's not the fault of quiche really. That's more of a fault of, um, uh, I'll save that for another talk. <clears throat> so yeah, and that's, um, the implementation here is not yet feature complete either, but more of a curl side because uh, doing things HTTP three and stuff it takes a little bit more fiddling. Uh, so we're we're going to get into that 
<clears throat> hopefully soon. And what's interesting here that Quiche is a library that provides HTTP3. And I know that Hyper is also working on, on its HTTP3 support. I mentioned already before that Hyper supports HTTP1 and HTTP2. And I know that they are working on HTTP3. So we are going to uh, into a future where it's going to be some interesting challenges to add support for H3 through Hyper as well as a, uh, as a sort of a pluggable approach. H3 is quite different than H2 in, in, my, in many ways. So it's, it's um, interesting times. So anyway, using Rust in curl is really a walk in the park. First of all, the, my first, the first few emails back and forth when I talked about this years ago now, <clears throat> when we run out of memory, we don't panic, right? We don't abort. Uh, we don't, the, it's a panic inside the Rust library and it makes an abort. And we do not do aborts in, in system libraries, right? We return an error. And I don't know the situation for this uh, right now in Rust, but back then it was an issue i hope this is better these days of course as a as a rust newbie um you get quite surprised of the fact that you have to do a cargo update all the time and it's it builds with a billion dependencies uh, but it's really a, uh, suitable for this uh, replacing components one by one and um it works really good for this and as i showed you on that little map thing before it's a good way to replace components one by one. And I could totally see curl replacing more of these components over time. I mean, given that people want this and that we have uh, competitive and good alternatives to do this with, <clears throat> there's of course that pattern of a bit of a lack of documentation in that corner um, space, you know, between the C and the Rust world as a, a C project as such as curl then has to use the, curl, uh, the Rust stuff. So exactly in that borderland that has turned out to be a challenge. So, but okay, that's a little bit how the journey here. So the current status is that, well, things are actually working pretty good. So basically in Hyper, we can do this, uh, you can build curl today with Hyper. Uh, it's, it's, we label it experimental. You actually have to enable by, so at will. Uh, so you have to, yes, I want to build with Hyper. And if you do that, you will see that curl works pretty much the same. And I, it's rarely that anyone will ever notice any difference anywhere. So it's totally um, agnostic to the uh, HTTPS to the TLS. And so you can actually build then with, you can build curl with Hyper and maybe Russell's if you want to go with the Rust TLS, but you can also go with another TLS library because they're totally independent. So you can go with whatever solution and it works just fine and transparently. So basically everything, all these magic HTTP stuff that you want to do with curl, all the fancy options, proxies, blah, 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 everything works transparently the same way <clears throat> with Hyper there. And we're at 99 point something percent success rate, I call it, because there are a few test cases still left. Six, six, I counted 16 yesterday that are still disabled when built, when, when, hyper, when built with Hyper because we haven't really adjusted those final edge cases yet. Really annoying, but <clears throat> still a fact. And that's uh, the primary reason why we still label it experimental because we're not quite there yet. And you know how it is with a project, you know, 90%, 99% done. So there's only 99% of the work left to get that final few ones fixed. Some of them pretty tricky, but we're, we're going there eventually. And of course in, in Russell's land, that's also called uh, considered experimental and mopped in and primarily then because we have 12 test cases disabled, you know, even f fewer than for hyper. And <clears throat> for example, Russell's doesn't support H uh, IP addresses in the certificate, which is a feature that you really need to do to be feature complete with curl. So we're, we're still hoping. So there's both features missing in Russell's and some, maybe some integration part left in curl. And in, in the key side of things, uh, HTTP3 then, pretty much the same state where in, in curl land there, we are more of an immature state there. So we haven't really gotten around to do everything correctly. We're starting our project right now. So we ho I hope that within, within the next six months, we will be in a much better place curl wise. And I think Quiche is a, in a pretty good place too. So <clears throat> that might 
So there's a little bit of a competition here, which of these uh, Rust-based solutions, Rust solutions that we will so now, remove the experimental tag from first, but uh, I think they're all in a pretty good position. So this, this is an interesting race to see where we go <clears throat> on this. So in total, then, you could say that we, um, we are going to see more Rustles in that curl binary. And you know that's that's the rusting curl here, and that's the sort of the takeaway here. We don't actually rewrite anything in curl in Rust, but we replace the components that curl can use with uh, Rust provided solutions, and it works really well, really smooth. It's transparent, and we don't really any users don't really have to care about it. Most developers don't have to care about it either. It just sort of works as long as we have documentation to figure out how to use them, um, and of course, out of memory should not panic and uh, of course this is a total open source project we i mean we're old but we're not big and we're not that many developers working on it day to day so any help uh, will be appreciated and you know and, and of course it's a bit of a tricky land to be in that borderland between c and rust so there's a special kind of person who's uh, who can do this of course but everyone can do a little bit and uh, we need your help there. So going forward, looking at curl, rust, you know, the combo, uh, the glorious future of this, I, I can see different things uh, uh, sort of happening. But of course, first, we need to make sure that all the test cases actually work with the rust solution so that we can remove the experimental tag and everyone can be happy. And we can then encourage, in, encourage users and those who build curl products to actually use the, the, these backends yeah, instead of the other backends. And uh, I'm taking sort of the backseat position here and say that's up to the users or the ones who build curl to bank that selection. I'll sort of let that be a market decision. If you want to go that way, go that way. If you want to go the other way, go the other way. And I see what everyone wants. If this is what everyone wants, we go there. And if we, if, if we go there, we might do it even more. We've sort of talked about uh, uh, making this easier to, to try out for users by providing binary builds or, or stuff like that. And we might see some of these getting enabled by default. I don't know where we are going by that. And again, that depends quite a lot on what actual users want and prefer. Because, um, you know, I, I don't predict, uh, I don't tell you how the future is going to be or where users are, what people want. So I'm just looking, uh, looking at behaviors and, and selections and what everyone wants. And of course, we've discussed this internally and with a few uh, people that there are more components out there that could be, uh, I mean, that are written in Rust that we could possibly consider using, possibly others for the already existing backends. And maybe we could do more backends like I did for the HTTP one with Hyper to provide more Rust written power into curl without ruining or sort of alarming the API or ABI. So that's where we are going. <clears throat> more curl, more rust possibly. Um, and that's what I wanted to tell you today. And if there is any question at all, I'll be uh, hanging out in the Q&A uh, Q uh, section, uh, wherever that is here on Zoom. Thank you. Thank you.